Hi guys and welcome back to TG Productions. My name is Tom. I am joined by Tom Greenway. Oh, also Tom. Goblin King Games slash Moonstone slash many other projects, secret projects that we'll maybe talk I, about. I may talk about later, but uh, who have we got here? Our this is guest? Lolly. So Lolly is my office dog. She's the good vibes manager at <laughs> Goblin King Games HQ. <laughs> Um, and you may recognise her from the Olim sculpts because she was the model for the, for the, the... joyful hound bounding along. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a lot to catch up on. Yeah. Like, so last time we saw each other was the UK Games Expo. Yep. So let's start with that. So first of all, I mean, we congratulate you in person at the time, but congratulations again. Thank you so, very much. So uh, Fan Choice Award, Critics Award for Miniatures Game, Range, Rule Set. And Rules, yeah. Everything yep. under the sun. Yeah. So. It's safe to say things have accelerated since then. Like, even we've noticed it on kind of social media of like different people picking the games up. You saw all manner of like celebrity hobby faces with their little selfies in front of the banners and everything. So, since you've had those trophies, how have things changed? Uh, I bought a gold plated yacht, <laughs> which sank. <laughs> Shame so, uh, back to square Shame one again, yeah, yeah. basically. How quickly did it take for you to buy those gold stickers that I got the starter <laughs> set? How oh, quick I was on it so fast. <laughs> they sent me an email uh, about a week before the event saying, um, just so you know, you, you've won. And it was literally the first thing I did straight onto <laughs> Vista Print. I saw some like, <laughs> every post on Facebook where it's like, I've got the starter set. I was like, what's this? And yeah, I was like, oh, I was on it. And we're going to keep rinsing this for the next year, I This reckon. is it. Every, everyone's going to know about it. So, like, in terms of logistics, business, just general busyness of life, how have, it, has it has it made a big difference? Like, how does it affect a business? It's, I think, ever. I mean, ever since I started Moonstone, I just I've been so busy. Yeah. But there's different challenges all the time. Yeah. Every time you get a little bit bigger, something that was working for you in the past, a process or whatever, is now now it's a yeah, huge yeah. blockage. So you have to work out how to solve that. It's all good stuff, though. It's nice being yeah. busy solving problems of growth. Yeah. Um, I've got Mick Green now, so I've got a full-time member of staff. Yeah. He's he's uh, normally sits at the desk that we're going to play on, so I said he could work from home today. But <laughs> um, yeah, we, we're going good. We got. Um, I think last time we spoke, you were the the only full-time member of staff. You were just in this building now. We've already just been talking off camera. That you're actually expanding to move to a bigger area because the warehouse. Yeah. And distribution needs more space, which is it can only be a good sign. Yeah, I mean, you've probably seen as you were walking through how many boxes we've now so got stacked up on tables and uh, all the shelving uh, that carries our stock is looking pretty full to the yeah. brim at the moment. So we're just going across the car park just to another unit on the same business park that's about 50% bigger. So my office area will stay the same size because yeah. it's it's fine for, for what I do, but the operations area is going to be it's about twice go. the size. So... so We've always said like your awards now are pride of place at home. Yeah. Are there are there any plans to try and expand that trophy cabinet now? What else can you go in for? What, like what uh, other opportunities? Well, because we went to Origins recently, yeah, yeah. and I was I was a bit gutted I didn't enter that. Because yeah. The awards people came over to me saying these are uh, really good. You maybe should you, have gotten it. You haven't entered. That's a shame. Maybe enter next year. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so. You know, they're I, like Pokemon I, League badges. You need to get yeah, like one from each fan. Yeah, it's, it's going to become an addiction now, hopefully. But so I suppose the main focus, what we need to talk about. I mean, we have these wonderful things over your shoulder here that you're going to be baptizing Courtney with <laughs> yeah. after this, which is the. <laughs> the, the <laughs> he's not happy. He's not. <laughs> It's like, who's playing Tom? It's like, Courtney, you came second highest in the campaign. You're playing against him. <laughs> um, the next big thing on the horizon is the Kickstarter. Yes. So, do we have a tagline for the Kickstarter? Like, we had a rising last time. Do we have a name? Uh, it's going to be called The Shades of Moonreach. The Shades of Moonreach. And yeah. that is aiming for when? Uh, it's going to be in October. Love so, we have, a, we have a provisional date in mind. Yeah. But um, let's just Expect make October. sure. Yeah, but definitely October. So, we've had a million questions about the Kickstarter because, obviously, the rising... The, the initial Kickstarters were very successful. The rising was massively successful. So, I suppose... Let's start with the basics, which is we've got Shades of Moonreach. What are we going to feature within the Shades of Moonreach Kickstarter then? So the Shades of Moonreach Kickstarter is going to be a little, little bit like our original Lash of Alt Kickstarter. So we're going to do miniatures. Yeah. So when I did the game launch, we did miniatures and a rule book, and it's a hell of a lot to, yeah. to kind of get both done. And I quite like to give people fast turnaround times on Kickstarters. Mm -hmm. Um, so this one's going to be focusing on the miniatures. There'll be enough miniatures to play a brand new faction called the Shades of Moonreach, yeah. or Shades for short, which are most people know, but not everybody will. They're undead. Yeah. 
So we've got our Commonwealth, our Dominion, our Lesher Vault, and then there'll be the Shades. Are they going to be the final faction for now? Or do you think, have you got some more knocking around? Well, that is a very interesting question. Yeah, because I remember last uh, time we spoke, you were like, I think it'll be four and done. I, I, think, and then... <laughs> I think it will be four and done. Yeah, but um, never say never. In our fourth book, I think I've got an idea, but that's a fair mm. few years mm. out. Um, but I think we will have our four main factions, yeah. which will be equally equal in size and equally yeah. supported. So who makes up the Shades, then? So... What kind of things would we expect to see? Are we talking... High fantasy, low fantasy, are we talking skelly, zombies? If you, so this has been christened by um, Jerry on tabletop as Fun Dead. Fun Dead. So Moonstone ha is well known for being whimsical. Yeah. Um, undead can be very dark and serious. Yeah. So I wanted to look at how we can make a Moonstone flavour of undead. So if you look at kind of these Heronius Bosch paintings, all these mad medieval yeah. things, there's some of that flavour. There's little hints of sort of Scooby-Doo-esque kind of... Uh, See, I haven't got 40 of... skulls on every base. No, yeah, not too many know. skulls. There's not too many classic I'm a skeleton, yeah. I'm a zombie. It's all of those flavours are mixed in. Yeah. Some medieval vibes, some absolute weirdness, <laughs> some, you know, ghosts and ghouls. Yeah. It, it, we want every single character in Moonstone to be unique and every single character to be somebody's favourite yeah, model in the game. To pop. So we've done the same thing with Undead. So everything is quite different. So it's probably safe to assume that in the grand future we might get a bit more of a lore dump on this. But for people who aren't necessarily up to date, where are the shades in terms of the wider picture of Moonstone? How are they fitting into the, the makeup of the factions we have already? So for anybody who's who's been keen on reading our lore... Yeah. Um, and may have got to the end of the Arising book, you'll notice that the Elric, the wizards, have done this great ritual and they've summoned the great, you know, the first Elric. Yeah. And it's gone horribly wrong because King Cherne, aka the Forgotten King, who some people may have read about in our Treasures and Tyrants yeah. of Torba book, has emerged and they are poo in their pants, quite yeah. frankly. They're like, oh my god, we've just summoned like the, the most tyrant, evil of the tyrant the, yeah. in our entire history of our island. So he's so, bringing a lot of these yeah, characters with him, isn't he? So, so we recently published a video with the uh, timeline of Torba because we wanted to give people a bit of backstory yeah, yeah. On, on who this guy is and, and what's going on. So he effectively unified uh, the island of Torba yeah. um, about 500 years ago. Uh, he betrayed Diana and he stole her city, which was Moonreach, and he created what was called the Dominion of Moonreach. Yeah. He left his home city of Stormguard down in the south, which is now ruined and Bumbleton, um, and effectively dominated the whole islands. You know, he, he was the king, the, he, you know, there was no rival to him. And his magical power was so great that he initially could keep his nobles and retainers uh, alive yeah. or unable to die with this uh, magic of his. And later, towards the uh, later periods of his power, he, his powers were so great, he could make his army undying as well. Yeah. So he was kind of impossible to defeat, or so they thought. Um, some gnomes tunnelled under Moonreach, just <laughs> blew it up, <laughs> and a whole load of his undying uh, nobles and army uh, got trapped under the city, uh, where they have been for, entombed for, entombed a while, yes. for 500 years. Um, Chernit himself got banished. Uh, there's, there's some more law that's going to come out, but the Sisters of the Sacred Spade uh, got involved and used magic to make sure that his death was, was permanent. Yep. And he went to the Deadlands, which is our version of... It's kind of a heaven and hell Your combined. Afterlife, yeah. yeah, the afterlife in, in this world. Um, and we're in now this era of relative peace where, you know, the, the Commonwealth you know, Rose and then the New Dominion. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they kind of all balanced out and the Elric helpfully decided to be impartial arbitrators and not pull any strings in the background or mess with people too much. Yeah. Um, so the... Chernit is back. Yeah. And he's come back from the Deadlands and he's opened the Deadlands and he's brought with him spirits of various kinds yeah. that were residing there. Um as well as some little weirdos who are called psychopomps who inhabit the Deadlands and look after the dead. Yeah, we can't show them, but they're literally there. <laughs> yeah. They're like just... <laughs> an evil tea cake. Yeah. Chris is there's, nursing one over there's, there. There's a tea keg of torment. We've got <laughs> Lampy Darks and we've got um, Jeremy, Lord of the Deep. They're, 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 like, they're very Moonstone in yeah. terms of the fun. 
Um, so they've been attending to the needs of the dead, but they've now been set free. So yep. they're running around having the time of their life <laughs> uh, in this mortal realm, not knowing what the hell's going yeah, on. Yeah. Um, but also the um, the entombed uh, Risen, they're going to be called the Risen. Yeah. All of Moonstone's factions generally launch with kind of two flavours. Yeah. Um, we've got the Risen, who are the ones that are emerging from their entombed status that are more medieval y, zombie, skeleton y yeah. types. And then we've got the spirits who've emerged from the Deadlands. Yeah. And if you're thinking ghosts and ghouls and things like yeah. that, yeah. and weirdos. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're going to be a lot of fun. They play very differently. The Risen have a lot of um, death triggers. Yeah, so they like it when things die. Nice. And they like, love Joby. Yeah, he's like, well, Joby's dual faction. Exactly. That's yeah. what I mean. Joby's so the best. Mate. They get buffs when things when the friendly characters die. That's great when you've got psychopomps because they're absolutely rubbish and they die really easily. Yeah. And that's that's kind of a new kind of engine that you can build with that's summoning cool. and killing. Um, and the spirits are more about cursing, so it's more about putting abilities on the enemy, which yeah. is going to debuff them and just stacking up lots of debuffs Love over them. time until you grind them down and. So I imagine away. our like Dominion Fairy players who main Diana are panicking a little bit then because that's there's going to be a big throwdown at some point I think between these factions. <laughs> yeah, there, like. absolutely. There's we're also going to bring back because um, King Churnit is so he's mega mega. Well, I was going to say right? from a law writing point of view, like have yeah. you written yourself into a like what the hell do I do next? Or have you got a long term? I've, I've got some really really good long term plans. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But in this, because you're basically bringing in like Thanos to yes. the, the yeah, world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So in this Kickstarter will be the Echo of the Forgotten King, yeah. which is going to be this absolutely epic model with all spiky gothic armour and nice. smoke. And you can summon him, um, but effectively, and we're still hammering out the details of the rules, every time he does an action, he suffers wounds. So he ah, just appears so he for just whittles a, little, over time. a short amount of time, causes absolute carnage, and then vanishes again. That's really cool. So you can play with this uber-powerful character. You yeah. can even bring him in your starting list, but... He will be he, gone by the end of the game. He's got a time span. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's going to cause carnage and then vanish again. So he's kind of our limited model for the Kickstarter that's going with this. No, or is he actually a bonus with the Kickstarter? He's he's one of the he's going to be one of the monster boxes. Wow, so he's going to be a regular be cool. edition. That's really um, cool. So it's going to be fun again, balancing something which needs to be super duper powerful, yeah. uh, but also just counts as one of your troop selection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's going to be interesting. So I suppose working out all right. I suppose the next stage with it is like mechanically with the Kickstarter that's coming up with the previous Horizon, we saw opportunities for people to kind of buy troop boxes, get perhaps access to limited miniatures. There's the old histories book yeah. that was there. Are we going to see similar things We're this gonna time? We're going to see very similar things nice. again. Yeah, I know a lot yeah. of people kind of heard the heard the Kickstarter was coming, thought about buying a keyword and like, actually, if I want to go in with this game, I'll go in with the Kickstarter and get loads there. Yeah, so. yeah we'll have um, we'll have kind of uh, entry level pledges where you can sort of mix and match yeah. from new box sets. We'll have a I want all the new stuff yeah. kind of pledge. Uh, we've got plans for that will be you know stretch goals of course, but yeah. plans for limited editions, uh, votes mm -hmm. as we've done in the past where yeah. people choose what model they want an alt sculpt That's of. Cool. Um, was it Callista last time? Who got the alt sculpt? Am I thinking Callista that? definitely got an alt sculpt. Yep, in the uh, Arising yeah. one that was voted for. Uh, I think we're up to about 10 alt sculpts yeah, now, so yeah. I forget the history of all of them, but yeah. there'll, there'll be probably, I think, a uh, like a free alt psychopomp, yeah. uh, and then a vote for Somebody what else. other model do you want an alt sculpt yeah. of as well, and they'll prob probably... Um, I, I, well, I'm still working out all the all the details yeah. and the costings and things at the it's moment. It's the nature, I think, like, you guys are, you're very experienced now with how your Kickstarters function. I think, like you said, having, like, a miniature one and maybe a book one and going yeah. that route is, is allows you to kind of manage this and... Well, we want to turn it around quickly. Yeah. We want it to be you six months. to have the miniatures. Yeah, we don't want yeah. people to back it and then be waiting two years. Um, and there's a lot of work that goes into writing a book and yeah. playtesting a book. And there's a lot of work that goes into developing a miniatures range as well. You know, yeah. you work with the artists and the sculptors. It takes ages. So I'm trying to do more and more in advance yeah. of Kickstarters and try and get the delivery times down yeah. as much as possible. So more prep, less of a window to go exactly, through. Exactly, yeah. And the more confidence we've got in the player base and, and and the longevity of the game, the more we can sort of, you know, risk it by by investing up front so that we can get those turnaround times as quick as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. It's for everyone's benefit, really. It's better for backers, but it's also better for us if we don't have, you know, that... Um, 
kind of that overhead essentially because yeah, I, I, I want to kind of power on to the next part of the story and the next release I think it's nice for people to like have back something and get it within the same calendar year and even if it like win the, the, you yeah. know they, it's just a simple thing of kind of like the excitement doesn't diminish but it's also like nice to see something you supported then being able to be painted up and played with within and a short space I don't know if you've noticed but we generally don't do new releases between a Kickstarter and a Kickstarter um, delivery. Yes. Because we want it to be all clear that deck. all of our effort is on the Kickstarter until it's delivered. So there's lots of reasons why we want to kind of deliver it as early as possible in what would be 2024. Yeah, that's scary now, yeah. isn't it? That's moving yeah. bit. So you've segued nicely there because you've talked about other releases. We're going to go to the can we talk about this section of the interview now. So <laughs> yeah. in, the, uh, in the histories video, I noticed there were some merfolk Yes, I thought that might come up. I remember when we visited <laughs> last time, there was stories of things that were being playtested. Yeah. Tell us more, Tom. Tell us so, more. So, merfolk exist in our law. Yes, They've they do. always existed in our law. And it's always been a bit of a puzzle because Moonstone is a game which takes place on land. You're digging up magic stones yeah. on the land. Um, it's entirely possible that Moonstones do form under, under the water. Yeah. Um, so... Susie very helpfully uh, wrote in one of the stories in The Arising about these magic necklaces. So we've, we've been given the um, kind of the, the opportunity yeah. to do it. What I'm not sure about is whether they will ever be like a fifth faction, as yeah. it were. Because um, potentially, you know, obviously let us know in the comments below, potentially a whole faction the size of the Commonwealth and the Dominion and the Lesher Bolt of all merfolk who presumably have legs because they're wearing magic necklaces yeah. might get a bit overkilly a bit overkilly yeah. so um what we're doing is we're dipping our toe um <laughs> as it were with, I'll let it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with a merfolk model who is an undead mermaid are we allowed so, to say yeah are we allowed to say the word siren or anything yep because <laughs> yeah. so, we've been sat on that for a while tom and it's, it's burning yeah. a hole in us at the moment so uh so i, I mentioned earlier on that churn it's kind of opened the yep. gates to the deadlands and various dead denizens yep. are flooding out god i'm on <laughs> yeah you're not fine <laughs> yeah um uh, and and this is one of them so it's, we can have a really cool mermaid model who's got a mermaid tail yeah um and sort of see how see how popular she is she will just be shades faction yeah because she's a she's an undead yeah um and i uh, how's, how's the play testing go with her how's that how's that gone it's it's good so she's got mechanics where she can spawn water pack yeah. water um water features on the table and can kind of pop between them yeah. so we and she's obviously slow and all of that so we're we, she is a she is a tailed mermaid yeah. and there is, and she magically maneuvers around the table but I've, I've got another one for you um but i thought there was more legs in pursuing oh. undead rather than mermaids oh. as on <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. so our new, our, our new faction will be undead yeah but it's given me an opportunity to sneak in an undead because nice. it didn't feel like a natural fit to just sorry sneak in a, a merfolk it didn't feel like a natural fit to just randomly go oh here's a merfolk, here's a merfolk yeah here's a merfolk in dominion because they do kind of exist in their own political structure yeah. out in the out in the sea but if they're dead it's fair game exactly <laughs> yeah so it should be a really really awesome model like reclining on a rock and with with yeah. psychopomp assistance yeah if no one's noticed I kind of went all in on that as soon as you mentioned it on like a random car journey when we go to the yeah. shops and I was like when's it coming when's it coming Tom? but we will we'll see how popular that that little taster is do you know who I do want to ask about and she's right here yes is it Drainer isn't Drania. it Drania yeah. right What's up with Drania? Okay. Because we're going to see her, obviously. Yeah. And the, the paint job, by the way, studio paint job is incredible yeah. on her, as is the sculpt. But it's she spurred so many questions of, like, how's her keyword going to work if yeah. she can shapeshift? Like, who is she aligned yeah, with? What's well, her motives? We'll play a game in a yeah. minute and you'll find out. So like, Drania, what's up with Drania? Drania is kind of a, um, a terrestrial deity. So she's kind of like... She walks yeah. the, the, the land, but she's kind of got a godlike yeah. entity. And um, she's uh, 
famous for her tricks. Yeah. She just loves to meddle and dabble. She kind of knows, she can kind of see what's going on, what's going to happen ahead of time. Uh, but she just kind of walks around Torba just causing mischief, changing her form, kind of like pulling strings yeah. at people just for the joy of it. So she first... Because obviously Eric found out first time. Yeah. So she popped up for the first time in the Fate of Eric story yeah. and she was really dabbling and kind of mm. steering because Eric, spoilers, has a very big part to play in the, on, in the ongoing, yes. um, st you know, the, the story that we're working on. For the right faction now. For the, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> too go. Gotta get in. So essentially our a rising book is the first part of a trilogy. Yeah. Um, the rule book is a collection of short stories that mm -hmm. kind of set the, set the tone of the world, but there's no kind of progression of the story. Yeah. Your rising starts the story. There will be two more books. Yeah which will have a grand and epic finale at some mm -hmm. point. That's the current plan. And Eric is so, destined to good things. So is, is she she's, pulling the strings of fate or is she just doing it off her own whims when it comes to these kind of like activities? Why that, is she popping that, up now? That suppose, remains to be seen. Yeah. But you're going to see more of her in the lore. Yeah. She, she's she's going to be a key character, uh, as is Eric. So where does she currently sit in keywords? Because obviously we'll see her on camera in a battle yeah. report, but so, where is she currently sitting? So she's a spirit, yep. but she can steal the keywords off other people around her. As, as, so, okay. Yeah, that's the she, thing. Isn't she's it? got an ability called Mimic and she can literally, for zero energy, she needs some cards, but she's yeah. got Trickster. So sometimes that's nice because it gives yeah, her an yeah. opportunity to gain extra energy in the process. That's cool. She can fairly easily just nab keywords off people. Brilliant. When she's got keywords, it allows her to do various forms of manipulation, like moving people that share a keyword, yeah. or um, when you attack her in melee, if she's got the same keyword as you, she's got kind of a can't hit me kind of ability. That's so, cool. so she's just constantly changing her form to, you know, trick you and yeah. play, mess with your head. Yeah. Um, she's a lot of fun. If anybody likes um, the arcane and bluffing side mm -hmm. of the game, she's, 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 she's your girl. absolutely turbo. Because she's got <laughs> two abilities. She's got trickster. Yeah. She's got two abilities that both work on two colours. No, so you just can't. You don't tell. know what's going to happen. You don't know what the hell she's doing yeah. because she might have what she needs, but she's tricking you anyway. She might, if you call a bluff because you're worried about trickster, she can almost certainly follow up with other colours. I like how she's just, just preemptive. Courtney's off camera. Yeah. I like how she's preemptive. Yeah. How much she's going to screw you in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> like. uh, her activations are exciting. You know, Lovely. if you like to bluff, you're going to love her. Okay. Um, it's interesting you mentioned about the fate of Eric. So we, we put on the Discord, are there any questions that people wanted answering? I know it's not going to be in the near future, but where are we at with like community events? Because obviously that went really well, but last time we saw you, it was right in the middle of fate of Eric. So right in the middle of has it. Has that kind of made you go, yeah, I'm going to do one of those again? Or is that kind of like... Because it was like, I there's a lot know. of games we, reported. We, but oh, yeah, it was... It was a lot. It's it insane, was, it especially in the last couple of weeks. Because it was a tournament uh, at the end as well, wasn't yeah, there? Did it? Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a really good number, much more than I thought. At, you know, I thought we'd maybe get 50 games reported. Yeah. And it was something like 250. Because I think at the time we visited, it was near the end of that campaign, and you were like, right, this yeah. is this is actually a lot that happens yeah. and a lot of like logistics. It was really exciting, and it was really good fun, and we may do one again. I haven't got an imminent plan for yeah. one. There's no character that's jumping out that needs no, to have I something. I always knew from the day that I made Moonstone, you've got this squire with a wooden sword, yeah. he needs to grow up into a knight. Yeah. And then as our kind of narrative ideas were progressing and we kind of thought, actually, we kind of need a hero for this. Yeah. It was like, oh, this is perfect. And then, um, you know, I I could see him as, you know, his dreams coming true as the Commonwealth knight he wanted. Yeah. But I could also see a story where um, the Dominion humans kind of become more aligned and that's part of his bloodline. And, yeah, and then I could see him working with the Lashavol because... Yeah, his true purpose. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, obviously he's riding an epic elk and yeah. that would be super cool and the yeah. Green Knight. And yeah, yeah. So he, I could, I'm like, all of these are cool. Which one should we yeah, go yeah, with? Yeah. Let, the, let, let's the people, let the people decide. I think the other question I wanted to ask is probably going to end the video abruptly because we're going to talk about potential spoilery <laughs> things. So the other thing that was asked on the Discord was, um, yeah, there's going to be a bit of that probably. Um, with the law, someone was asking about the Gribble Bog in terms of like how that works as a location because I think in the way it's described in the law yeah. is very, not vague, it's described well enough, but they were kind of like, what is the Gribble Bog actually like? So we're starting to see characters popping up now who have got a lot of ties to the Gribble Bog. Yeah, so the Gribble Bog is where a lot of trolls come from, yeah. and it's swampy. Yeah. And we may do um, sort of feral goblins yeah, at some yeah. point in the future from the Gribble Bog, so it might be explored a bit more. That sounds cool. 
Um, Are there any other areas? We, we're looking off camera because the map is up here. We <laughs> it's know, massive as well. We know, the four foot high. <laughs> <laughs> we know the northern parts of the island are going to be getting involved soon because obviously the, the nature of where the story is going. Are there any areas that you are deliberately avoiding currently because you know they're going to come up later or is there any areas that you kind of like look at that map and you're like i need to actually zero in on or well we've we're, we're sort of ticking them off one by one you're kind of working we? your way up aren't our you, new really? box set is called weirdwood and you'll see that weirdwood's up there we've got I'll uh, map on a, screen. Uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> we've got uh the shades of moon reach that are going to burst out of moon reach yeah. which is right in the middle uh and we covered off the darkwood a fair bit recently because that's where a lot of the fawns come from yeah. twilight glades is kind of a fairy home so we're, we're, we're sort of getting through most of them we haven't covered the mountainous regions too much so that that might be an interesting one would, and would, Fergenholt, where the giant's ancestral home is would anywhere on your computer opposite me have any information about areas outside of this island tom it won't, but we're we're thinking about it. Are you? Are really? About it. Um, it was on my mind the other day to chat to our, our cartographer who created that yeah. map and say, right, now zoom out. Zoom out. <laughs> yeah. Is it like in a Final Fantasy game where you get the airship and suddenly <laughs> yeah. just everything opens out? Yeah, because there will be interactions with other islands coming up really? in the lore soon as well. Yeah, it's going to be going to be a factor. Okay. So it's it's coming. So are we allowed to talk about the centaur? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes, yeah. do it, do it. <laughs> You're obsessed. Look, yeah. like, how can I can I start with just the keyword that I'm asking about here? What keyword is the centaur potentially to do with? Uh, she's fawn, yeah. fawn animal, yeah, obviously. Boy. Right, all right. The so, uh, so for, for context, last time I visited, Tom very cheekily just had his computer open and went to Chris and went. Here's these goblins, there's a tax collector. And Chris was like, oh my God, when's that coming out? And he's like, soon. And then he went, Tom, but for fawns, there's these. And there's like amazing artwork. And I was like, yeah. just where, where is it, Tom? Where is she? So she's coming. There's Does a... she have a name yet? Nephily. Oh, yeah. very cool. Okay. Um, tell me, tell me more. So she is going to be, she will be released after the Kickstarter yep. is fulfilled. Um, originally, our idea for this box was Dranya, because we knew that she yeah, was important. It, yeah. A tree folk, because, um, you know, Leshevolt, nature, mm -hmm. that seemed like a really cool idea for a character. Uh, and Nephili. Um, when we started playtesting the tree, um, it became apparent that we had l way more ideas for tree folk. Yeah, because so this was basically this idea to start with, wasn't it? It started off as one, yeah. one tree person. <laughs> Uh, and it ended up as three, <laughs> and and it, uh, you know we'll see how popular they are. But there's no reason why we couldn't make more. Tree yeah. We've got more ideas for different kind of flavors of tree. Um, so Nephilim got bumped along. Who is Nephilim then? Can you tell us? Oh, something? we'll. You'll, oh, it's, it's, so it's too, it's too it's far out to, to, to go too much as that. And also, it, we haven't written it yet. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, how, how, how much the, damage can she do? To <laughs> like, are there any more so, weaklings in the fawns, the, or are they all going to be strong? There will be another fawn box as part of. So the book three. Yep. Obviously, we've got the rule book, the arising book three will have a new fawns box and she will be in that box and there'll be some other really cool things which will surprise everybody in that <laughs> box which will then kind of lead us into our ongoing plans and there's Lovely. some there's so many cool things coming up and i'm trying to be good and not tell you the i mean you could pick one end game because i think this could take <laughs> yeah. years to roll out but i can kind of see the, the, all stages. the stages of the story yeah. and, and I'm going to try and hold some of the cool stuff back because there is some super cool stuff coming. I suppose to round us off then, like in terms of game mechanics where we are now, we've had an errata recently, we've had obviously a new faction that's coming up. What areas, I think we've asked this each time, what areas of Moonstone are kind of exciting you at the moment, either from a mechanical or story point of view? Obviously the shades coming out is a the, big one. The sh yeah, is, it, the sh is it how they're going to interact with the current game? Is it what their faction bring? What's so, the thing that's Getting your attention. The fact that it is the shades. Yeah. You know, I mean, these guys are awesome as well. Yeah. They, these guys play a lot with wooded patches, as you might yeah. imagine. So it's kind of a, 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 you'll see when we play the game, kind of you're building your wooded patch fortress and sort of defending it. So it's yeah. a new way to play. But the shades faction, again, it's a completely different way to play. Yeah. Lashavolt brought in a bunch of different mechanics with kind of having extra energy more yeah. than and kind of built Catastrophe that. play and all Catastrophe that. Catastrophe yeah. play. So the shades have got their own. Uh, completely new but really fun yeah. mechanics. They don't have the traditional healing spell, for mm -hmm. example, which is such a key thing for yeah. them. They've got some weak heals, 
but obviously lots of reanimation, lots yeah. of, you know, they're expecting triggers. they're expecting to die they're expecting rather than to, to keep die themselves and then alive. come back and they're expecting to summon reinforcements and it's you know, it's that's really, really fun. Um from a kind of mechanics point of view. I think Love people it. will really enjoy it. And final, final question. Who's your favourite character to play at the moment? Who are you enjoying playing with? In current rotation, not your playtesty spoilers. Like who, who are you enjoying putting on the board at the moment? I am really enjoying these guys. Yeah? Um, but picking one out of them is really tough. Um, I do like Snag. <laughs> so, so Snag is dual faction with the Shades. Yeah. So along with Joby. Um, when the Shades faction comes out, you'll be able to join them up with the Shades spirits. Nice. And their, their thing is kind of laying down debuffs, effectively. Mm -hmm. So you'll see it in a minute. He can lay down curses. So once he curses people, everyone around them starts suffering wounds at the end of the turn. <laughs> um, yeah. Caught he's crying off camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, the, the, I, it, anytime somebody says, who's your favourite, it's the hardest question to answer. Yeah. So I deliberately try and make sure that you love all of them. I love them all equally. Yeah. And if there's any that I'm like, that one's a bit bit rubbish, I'll just keep working on it until it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then it'll get published. So it's it's really hard to say. But definitely in terms of unleashing some whole whole new suite of different mechanics yeah. onto the world, which are, um, in my opinion, super fun in the new faction, is probably like the thing I'm most excited about at the moment. We should probably get them on the table, shouldn't we? Let's do it. So, massive thank you again, Tom. And thank you for you guys watching. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Well, a massive thank you for watching that video, guys. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to find some more, they should be over here. And if you want to support the channel and the content that we create here, there's links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. Take care.